Hi, my name is Philip Beither. I'm the curator for performing arts here at the Walker Art Center. And with me is Faye Driscoll, uh, director, choreographer, performance maker, who is with us this week. Um, she presented on Wednesday night, two nights ago, uh, the first part of a trilogy called Thank You for Coming. And this one was called Thank You for Coming, colon, Attendance. And the Walker is really pleased to be part of all three parts of this trilogy. So we'll be looking forward to having future conversations with Faye as well. So well, uh, welcome, Faye. It's Thank nice you. to have it's you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. We, uh, it was a great pleasure to see the work unfold here on our stage. And I wanted to ask you about uh, the, n the notion of a trilogy and mm. um, what, um, what your, A, what you were, what, what inspired you to make uh, mm. a connected uh, series of works in this mm. way and what, what your, what your inspirations were to, to, to yeah. look at these connected pieces. Yeah. Um, well, it is a trilogy in that it's three. Right. But I, I think of it a bit more like a series. Mm -hmm. And um, the initial, initial impulse to, to make the series came from a few different places. Uh, one was a sort of exhaustion with the uh, premiere, um, make a work, it's over. Right. Make a whole new work. Yeah it's over and kind of the cycles that I think a lot of contemporary performance makers are in. Yeah. Um, and this noticing that a lot of work that I make, one idea kind of bleeds over into the next. Right. And to think of it as a sort of body of work or a, a lifelong making yeah. of work. So yeah. I think I reached a point where I wanted to begin to frame my, my practice as a... Um, making making things uh, throughout time right. and see it over a longer trajectory. So to have a five to six years to make uh, three different works that are connected through similar concepts, right, yeah. but that are also saying, I'm going to be making work for yeah. um, a long time right. and I want to give sure. myself a longer thread. Right. Um, so that was one, yeah. one part of it. And then the other was... Uh, the sense of wanting to build a kind of practice uh, company, right? A company building without it having to be formally a, uh -huh. a company, but because, because you were thinking of utilizing the same performers for, for yeah, for so many. some of the same performers yeah. for the most part, and then some of the same designers, right. um, but also the kind of conversation that can happen. Yeah when um, people's bodies have been inside practices because every show I make is like the ability to do it yeah. is happening or the technique for doing the show is being made through the making of the show right it's right. not as if anybody walks in yeah kind of being able to move like this for 20 minutes yeah. and sing right. and right. Uh, hold several images and multiple states in their body and right um, so I was seeing the value of that kind of time spent in that mm. conversation and wanting to emphasize that right. as another way to, in a way, not de-emphasize product or, or p bring them on kind of parallel ground right. to the process and end point. Yeah, yeah. So, did you? I, yeah. I find as a curator and in a city outside of, away from your home city of New mm -hmm. York, um, it also allows, uh, it's a nice opportunity to give audiences um, mm. a duration of time with an art, a single artist's work to see how it evolves yeah. from piece to piece and what some of the connective themes are. Yeah. Uh, you, you mentioned yeah. in some writing also that you, you know, certainly with attendance, you were investigating the relationship between audience and performer. Yeah. Do you anticipate that that will be a continued exploration in all of these? And the use I of, do. and the notion of live performance and the space that inhabits it and how, how those things are related? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think of it, um, yeah, I do think, th I think that the impulse to explore that um, interrelationality between audience and performer or the uh, posing um, performance as a kind of contemporary ritual space where uh -huh. we might sense and feel that we're co-creating something together right. live in real time. Yeah. Um, so I think of that as something that I've been kind of obsessed with already yes, sure. and that I wanted to really ad address more directly, yeah. uh, very physically in part one. Right. And right. I think perhaps in part two more perceptually, more uh, in terms of how we kind of me create meaning, uh -huh. create narrative, create right. uh, 
I guess, for lack of a more specific word, society yeah, yeah. together. So right. I think that I'm dealing with that palpable, trying to make palpable the thing between two things, the thing between audience performer or you and me sitting here right now, right. which is making this conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of bringing yeah. that out and charging that uh, to the point where it becomes more yeah. experienced or felt uh, more palpable. The uh, title, um, thank you for coming, has a, has a kind of shares a sense of generosity that the work mm. itself has, a, a kind mm. of welcoming mm -hmm. of people. There was not mm. irony really in that uh, or is there some? Uh, um, I guess there is a little bit. Yeah. Um, there's a little bit in the in the in the sense of that I see it at once as a as a welcoming as one um, simultaneously a welcoming um, a presupposition. Yeah. Because if I say that, then it really does mean you're already here. <laughs> right. Um, and then also a little bit of an implication. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, and some of the irony part might be in the supplication mm -hmm. because I think that that is something that I, I don't hear said as much when I go to other countries. It sort uh -huh. of feels like uh, there's a little bit of a, a an artist in the States, a, a slight beggar stance or something. Uh, so uh, like, uh, you've chosen to come. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. know, and I, it, I've, it struck so, home for me because it's probably the phrase I use most with my yeah. audience and donors and others. It's like, yeah, you know, and it, it is sort of like you could turn it out around and say, you're lucky you're here. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there is that thing of, yeah, you're in my home. Right. And, yeah, and sure. In, yeah, um, uh, it's something we say in restaurants and homes. Yeah, and, yeah. But there is this other side of it that's kind of like, um, yeah, that reflects a little yeah. bit on uh, the, the stance of the artist. And the, the, the really unusual, you know, very, very involving and par participatory nature of the use of the McGuire stage for mm -hmm. attendance and um, the kind of different relationship with the audience um, speaks to, I think, mm -hmm. perhaps, but I'm interested in your thoughts, um, a, a rethinking of that traditional ticketed passive reception mm -hmm. of an audience of a staged theatrical or dance work. Do you feel yeah. like that relationship of the ticketed audience on one side and the artist mm -hmm. performing for them on the other is going away is mm. increasingly irrelevant or mm -hmm. is it just another style of yeah. work? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I tend to think, you know, uh, I think more not less is possible. Uh -huh. I think that it's right. just m an, more options yeah. and yeah. Um, perhaps a hopefully an eventual eventual softening of the expectation that it's going to be one way and uh -huh. perhaps an architectural transformation where things are built right. to accommodate um, a multiplicity of uses and right. spaces. Yeah, and yeah. So I think it, I do think there's an expansion that's mm -hmm. happening long before I started making art right, and that is right. continuing to happen and saying, yeah. you know, um, what are the spaces that we need to make live, yeah, live yeah. art? But I don't think that the proscenium, you know, is must dead. die. <laughs> yes, right. um, I do think that it, it's interesting how it reflects the screen uh -huh, and right. the, the sort of sense of framing something. Right, yeah, and so yeah. even when I work in a really proscenium style, I am interested in challenging that right. um, way someone might then recede yeah, huh. from being an, an, an active, an activator. Right, right. Uh, so when you mentioned yeah. that you thought, you know, in some ways this was a modern day ritual that was created. Yeah. Do you feel like there's something about the moment that we're living in, the digital age, that this, yeah. that a work like this is is serving uh, the culture in a certain way, giving yes. people things, filling a hole that they have in their lives in some way. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that um, I certainly crave that, right. and I certainly am drawn to uh, making work with people in live and in in real time, and frequently yeah. barefoot, and right. frequently singing, and, yeah. and dancing, and uh, discovering things together uh. that have humans have been doing. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, since ancient times. Right, right. Um, and I think that, that there is a kind of, I've noticed a craving for that and uh, I've been moved and surprised to sense from audiences a desire yeah, to, and right. I actually, in feeling uh, so much aversion, even when I say, oh, participatory work, so often the response is like deeply adversive, so I right. try not to I use know. that word, right. and even right. in my own self, it's yeah. really adversive. Yeah. But then to, on the flip side of that, to see this really uh, palpable longing hmm. to be touched, to right. move, to, to be a part of, uh, to be paid attention to, hmm. 
um, which I think at this time is often being refracted through multiple non uh, physical right. or sensorial. Yeah, I, yeah. I won't, real and fake is too complicated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in time together and yeah. in physical time together. Uh, Do you think as a dance, as a trained dance artist, that that dance as a form has a, as can be a kind of antidote. You have an mm. embodied sensibility mm -hmm. that maybe other art forms don't as much and can kind of help address yeah. the digital divide of you know the, the lack of connection people are feeling in some ways. Yeah, yeah I think so. I mean, yeah. I think that um, I think that dancing and singing do have a kind of. Uh, I think that there's something that we all have available to us, and that is um, a capacity like language yeah. or like. Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Language, I guess, would be the closest one because it's not like eating or right. or sleeping. Yeah. It's sort of it, not on that level of sort of basic um, survival. But I do think there's a necessity around yeah. it, and that they have a capacity to um, self self heal and um, actually like create uh, new neuro pathways, new ways of mm. being together mm. that. Uh, I think often we get really hung up and stuck in thinking that that has to happen through some sort of uh, verbal dialogue right. or through some sort of, yeah, um, yeah. a transformation can occur, uh, whatever it may be, Outside without an agenda right, for right. a kind of certain aim on yeah, my part, but yeah. that, that is something that I think we often feel is inaccessible to us or becomes sort of something professionals do. Yeah, um, and also I, I wonder if you think, I mean, it, there's always, there's always uh, many comment on the challenges of language and its, and its ability to describe mm -hmm. embodied experience. And mm -hmm. dance seems to have had a tortured history with mm -hmm. like language in some ways. Do mm -hmm. you feel like mm -hmm. that um, the form itself allows people to move past language and mm -hmm. to use, uh, use another, another, obviously another form, way of communicating? But do you yeah. feel often burdened by having to use language to def right. describe your work? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think I have felt that way, and I think that um, I start to see it as a useful tool to kind of point, yeah. you know, like yeah. Um, yeah, point yeah. at the in the in the direction of it. And I, I mean, there's people who really use language to um, do what I think I, is happening right. in dance, right. yeah. also. Yeah. That, that, oh yeah. Uh, um, and actually, it's funny because part two is dealing a lot more with a kind of what can feel like a dichotomy between the sensorial experience, between a lived experience and then a named right. uh, yes. languaged experience. And right. uh, so that's definitely a question that's up for me right now. Uh -huh. Is there such a split? Right. Uh, are they in fact kind of um, emerging simultaneously? Uh -huh. or uh -huh. uh, Often things I think are liberated by language, right. uh -huh. by having a name, by right. having, but then they're simultaneously um, at times reduced. Limited. In, Limited. Yeah, right. And so, yeah. Uh, and you have yeah. termed part two play. Yes. Which yeah. <laughs> could be read as it's yeah. a it's it's a gymnasium and yeah. people are having fun. Or yeah. that it's a it's a play play. You know, yeah. It's a, a exactly. And, uh, yeah. Are yeah. you are you playing with both meanings in some ways? Or? I am, yeah. 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 Um, the play in the sense of yeah, the spontaneity and the um, um, well, even the, the sort of obsessive repetition and practice right. of something yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. that happens primarily in our younger lives, uh -huh. uh, right. but also that and that sense of improvisation mm. that we're doing all the time right. within yeah. within constrained yeah. societal situations uh, usually, right. uh, and also the attempt to to make something that is a bit more of uh, dealing directly with narrative and yeah. meaning and yeah. um, mm. script. Do you, do you uh, in making attendance, you, you make your works over sometimes two, three years yeah. or so and develop them. Yeah. What would you, was there a p single thing that was particularly delightful or surprising mm. in the process of discovery in mm. the making of the work? And mm. was there another thing that was particularly difficult and onerous? Oh, <laughs> yeah, let's see. Um. Hmm. I think that one thing that it was really delightful or was ex exciting to me was uh, see 
seeing the way I, uh, initial threads of, uh, for example, wanting the, having the desire to feel that the audience was physically interconnected right. and that their bodies were implicated in the work mm -hmm. from the beginning. Um, I went really far from that idea huh. in the process of making it just towards kind of what excited me, right. what, um, without, I, I had to throw it away. Hmm. Um, but then to see then later how through the set and through the sound and through uh, actually dress rehearsal huh. um, was the first time that I actually invited someone in huh. to that final circle. Oh. So, Oh, really? For I the guess final dance? Uh, yeah, so oh. it, it kind of took, the, it, that intention stayed there, but it took a circuitous route. Ah. Huh. And that, to me, is something that's really, uh, it's just, it's exciting and, and sort of organic and strange that yeah. uh, if I were to look at it too directly, I think I might have found a much more um, didactic way of right. getting there, but it was uh, through... Left brain kind of direction. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And it was through sort of um, holding that very lightly and yeah. then kind of continually kind of going towards what uh, I desired and asking the question in new ways right. that I sort of found my way through surprise to this place where uh, I, I was the, it was dress rehearsal and I said, mm. would you like to skip? Huh. So, um, huh. do you find yourself in this era, I mean, now that you've been making work for mm -hmm. a stretch that yeah. um, more confident that that those moments will come and giving yourself the yeah. patience to see it through and figure it will bubble up at some point? Yeah, that I do and it, it continues to be a, a challenge to tr continually trust that. Right. Because it's also, again, back to the thing about language. Yeah. It's something yeah. that you, you've got to talk about and you've got to say, here's what I'm doing. Right. And you've got to say, this is what it looks like now, but yeah, trust me, this is going to yes. get there right. in this other right. way. And, yeah. And uh, the, the more visible I feel, uh, it can be harder to allow for those mercurial, uh -huh. um, or I have to I have to be a little more active about allowing right. for. Yeah. Whereas I think when I was first making things, there was just so much time that um, in which no one was asking me like, "Oh, what's next? Yeah, and the, where's it going?" The commissioners and the funders yeah. are saying like, "I need yeah. a paragraph I've written up about yeah. this." So, yeah. So I think that that's just a but that that tension of between visibility is I think it's a it's part of it right. too. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Huh. So was it um it's a is it a piece that's uh tough on the performers? They seem to yeah. be all in and really working hard at the same yeah. time they seem to be having great yeah. pleasure like with yeah. it. Yeah, uh, I think it is it's it's intensely challenging. Yeah. I mean, it's rig it's rigorous and it's exhausting and it's emotional, physical, right. psychological, um vulnerable, very exposing, huh. whole body, you know, literally up on that platform. Yeah. And right. Uh, yeah, um, and making that much kind of connection really yeah. actively yeah, with yeah. people throughout the work. Right. And, uh, Especially you made this special, I mean, really uh, striking uh, choices to have the performers so close to the audience and yeah. giving really direct eye contact, which yeah. a lot of people find a little discomforting, like yeah. audience members, and then touching, you know, touching yeah. audience members as well. And that yeah. has to take a fair amount out of the performers because they're putting yeah. themselves so out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it does. I, I also have noticed that it, it kind of energizes in another way. Uh -huh. and I, I wanted the work to be something that would be, they could pass through and feel changed oh, by huh. also. Yeah. Um, and I think since the, the work was made really collaboratively, there's so much of them in it. Right, right. Um, yeah, so I think there's a there's an exhaustion, but I don't witness it as like a oh, yeah, I'm just no. so drained. There's some right. sort of feed feedback that's right, happening. Right, right. They're 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 getting. They're also from gaining. Those. Yeah, yeah, huh. yeah. And I think, but by the end, there is a kind of a uh, kind of giving over yeah. of the experience. Yeah. To, um, How about your role in the thing? piece? You, you're yeah. uh, you play this uh, mm -hmm. kind of quiet but interesting. Mm -hmm. You're in the shot. You're around a lot mm -hmm. in the work, and then you have. Gl Gloves, and you're kind mm -hmm. of a technician, yeah. uh, and also yeah. a working dude, you know, and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, yeah, uh, yeah. I am. I'm kind of. I'm the stagehand. I'm like the the ringmaster. I'm the myself right. as a director. Yeah. I'm um, directing the audience. I'm the ideal audience, or I'm 
the, a believer, a true believer. Right, right. In some One sense. One of the first and ones up to participate or whatever. Yeah, yeah. In, in some way. So I, I, it, it felt really important to me that that was visible, uh, as, as is the, the sound is visible throughout yeah, the work, as right. is the technician, the lighting designer visible. Um, and we are all the first to kind of come in right. at the end. It didn't seem like it would be, um, it would be really false for me to make a work in which I was asking the audience to engage in a certain right. way where I, my body uh -huh. wasn't also engaging. Yeah. And, and I was also interested in playing with that kind of meta layer of watching the director sure. direct right. and letting right. that be something that was visible. Yeah. And, Why did um, you make the choice to make the lighting and sound and everything so, so visible for... Uh, yeah. What what was your your? Uh, I want. I mean, I wanted that uh, that labor to yeah. be present. That yeah. the, the work we're all doing to be present. The the magic that's being made to yeah. be you know kind yeah. of bare bones in there. Um, but that this, a similar thing. Whereas if I'm asking the audience to be here in this way, I wanted our our sort of tribe right. to also be 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 seen. Right. And sure. Be on the stage with us. Yeah. Yeah. and a, a part of the playing space and then in it yeah, at the sure. end. Right. And I'm thinking a similar thing for, for part two. Oh, like, great, yeah. Uh, my fantasy is that the production manager like, you know, has a song with uh -huh. <laughs> right, work right. as well. And that, um, That's great. Yeah, and also yeah. I think these things can feel divided and behind yeah. the scenes and yeah. not as, um, yeah. it's all what's happening to, to make the thing. Right. And, and, the and if you're a maker yourself, you're usually watching that as well, or yeah, a curator, right. but yeah, I think often definitely. you're not. Right. You're, you're thinking the sort of sound and lights come from somewhere. I guess it you. also, it's not brand new. It goes back, mm. well, way back, but yeah. to Brecht, for instance, who yeah. you know, is like, didn't yeah. want the artifice of theater to be all this sort of right. so-called hidden magic and things. Yeah, and, and I kind of wanted like the magic to be there while you watched uh, the labor. Right. <laughs> so yeah, to yeah. still sort of somehow find yourself inside the fantasy, uh -huh, but just uh. to have that kind of, yeah, I guess a Brechtian bare bones right, seeing yeah. the, the work. The, te uh, the technology behind yeah, it. Yeah, so that it yeah. doesn't doesn't then have to be something um, yeah. stripped in the sense of a lack of pleasure right, um, right, or a yeah. lack of fantasy or magic. Yeah. That's um, another like delicate line that you walked in the work, you know, to because yeah. that's a difficult thing to do both in some ways. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I was interested in if you considered if you place yourself within a dance lineage of mm. some sort. Would mm -hmm. you say? I know mm. it's a big, broad world yeah. of contemporary dance and performance these days, but would you mm. point to certain people that, like, mm -hmm. that you your work comes out of in some way? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think um, definitely. I mean, I, I I don't always feel it extremely directly. Uh -huh. Like, uh, I trained with this person, and then right. I took that idea, and or I'm using this particular vocabulary. This particular vocabulary, but it's a little skewed this way. Right. Or, yeah. Um, but I definitely think that the there's a collectivity to. Uh, all the dance training mm. that I've done, mm. all the time I've sent, spent in that social space, all the influence that's literally imprinted in my body. Right, um, right. And then, you know, like working with, I mentioned to you the other day, working with Yasmin Godet yeah, in college yep. was a big influence and in that her work was functioning on many levels at once, psychological, physical, uh, imagistic. Uh. Um, and really dealing with the body as a quite a layered container. Ah, right. And then I think uh, actually training in this kind of, I guess a fairly postmodernist yeah, aesthetic yeah. was sort of coming from the 80s and 90s in New York. Right, and sure. I was there as a young student in the 90s and yeah. there was very much this sort of postmodernist. Right, I, yeah. In a way I think I, I took some of that and also that no thank you yes, to right. all that. So why not all these other things? Yeah. Because in their like a shoeing of, of narrative yeah. and their shoeing of virtuosity. Right. Uh, I think that um, there become an, came another trope or another right. set sure. of rules. Right. And so I think uh, in that way that in a not to th not in a total reaction, taking some of it and just going, Well what about more? Right. What about this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also think of myself as relating to a lot of contemporary theater makers. Right, sure. So yeah. Collaborated with some. And so Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I think that that's there. But it's, yeah. um, and you're, it's one little thing that 
your choreography for the face. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there yeah. was the postmodern kind of sense like don't you don't move make that face. face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're yeah, almost yeah, yeah. The, uh, another whole opposite direction. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's sometimes shocking for people, I think, to see yeah. dancers with so many facial, you know, uh, right. voca you know working a whole vo facial vocabulary. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And there's somehow an idea that that can't, that they're. That there can't simultaneously be that kind of fluidity or ambiguity or abstraction right. that, that people are looking for. Like, yeah, yeah. let the body be more than just the body. Let a body not just be identity. But, right. But that, I think I'm interested in saying, well, this is like, let's have more of humanity inside this question. Yeah, yeah. Not less. And yeah. what is the idea of a neutral face? It's right. Of, seems problematic to me. Uh-huh, um, yeah. So. It's um uh, you mentioned the other night too that your mom who was a dancer mm -hmm. and that she yeah. was one of the in original cast members in the scandalous Oh Calcutta yeah. show yeah, which yeah, yeah. like I think yeah. a certain kind of radical streak might have might yeah have that's been. true I think if I think yeah <laughs> if, if I think about uh, that I think uh, growing up yeah uh, around other her and her friends and uh -huh. other, my dad was also an actor uh -huh. and uh, uh -huh. this sort of sense of um, definitely of permission and of uh, that I could kind of make whatever I wanted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There was never the like, ah, oh, you should have a more practical career conversation that I think a lot of yeah, uh, right. artists might have. And this yeah, feeling definitely. that you could kind of make whatever you wanted from whatever was close to you. Right. Like right. from yeah, yeah. grabbing something around uh, the house uh. and um, putting on a show. Right. right. Um, did you do that as a kid? Did you put on I did. Oh, yeah, and constantly. Yeah, yeah. And they were frequently quite charged with a political or huh. a, um, a wanting to talk about, you know, global warming. Right, or sure. Wanting to right. talk about something that felt unjust yeah. in the world. And right. it was like this immediacy of, I can now write a poem about that or right. make a dance piece about that or yeah. write yeah. a short piece about that. So. That's interesting because you said one time, I, didn't have, I don't have the exact quote here, but that you still think of your performance, the collective energy that cu you create with the audience and with yeah. your performers as a kind of political act. But your work mm -hmm. is not directly yeah. political in the way we think of political theater right. or something. But what did yeah. you mean by that? Um, political. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. I think that, I mean, I think that that's been a question that I've been living through, particularly the Thank You for Coming series yeah. is that. Uh, how do I connect to that uh, part of me that did make work from a very young age yeah. to, to to think that I could correct or uh, make some improve. sort of change, improve, to sp right. speak to things that were unjust. And yeah. I think um, now it's become more of this thing of how do I... Uh, how do we feel that our kind of interrelatedness mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. notice that we are kind of participating whether we know whether we uh, like it or not, right. that we are kind of co-creating the world that we're in, yeah, and, and yeah. thinking that maybe performance is a space in which that uh, sensation is mm. heightened um, by the act of uh, of making something together, really live. And, yeah. And uh, yeah. do you have yeah. you heard, or do you hope that the impact of a work like Attendance would create people's actual, either conscious or unconscious sense yeah. of more connectedness to to the surroundings and the people in their lives and yeah, their that, communities. And that's definitely like that. there is intentionality in the yeah. in the work for me, and I, I you know it's even like kind of starting to make work with that type of intentionality. Yeah. There's a, a hesitation or a, a question around um, kind of claiming that as mm -hmm. a as a thing because right. I, I also want everyone to have their own experience of it and like last sure. night someone might say I actually didn't feel agency I felt like I was being told what to do right and yeah that's there as well so mm. I think it's not to put it in this work will be successful only if right sure it creates that in every person that yeah. come but that yeah. I can sort of stand in uh, that intention and, yeah. and make something that uh, playfully and uh, through circuitous routes and yeah, delight yeah. and uh, seduction and right. uh, invitation, it allows for that possibility right. as yeah, a yeah. as a as an option. And yeah. But I think it's vulnerable in a way to um, yeah. 
say this is what I want. Right. And I think it's also some, there's something about, there's some assumption in me, and I'm not saying this is in many, in everyone, but around kind of political work and work that has a kind of intentionality right. like that, uh, and it being smart or being, right. uh, you know. Not reductive. Not reductive, not right. didactic. Right. Um, so, mm. And uh, actually, in attendance, making something that people have said to me, I feel joy. Right, yeah. I feel connected. Yeah. Um, it was a very, I think I, I'll long remember seeing the work in Paris just a few weeks after the shootings. Um, yeah. And just that sense of, it get, well, like a huge sense of human relief and connectedness mm -hmm. that, it, that mm -hmm. it engendered at that moment in time. Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel really, I feel really uh, grateful to right. have made something that could go to Paris at that time yeah, and yeah. to um, ha have a sense of interconnectedness and com community yeah, come yeah, out of it. And, yeah. and I think it's it's really it, it's interesting for me sometimes because I, like a lot of people, feel challenged by that sense of what it means to be connected, what it means right. to be in community. Yeah, it feels right. abstract to me. I can right. feel quite isolated yeah. and knowing a lot of people and being among many. And so I think it's also a an ongoing uh, uh, experiment for me to mm. engage in as that a way. human in the world. As a human in the world, right, yeah. And yeah. I can feel like last night I felt oh the vulnerability of my own body mm. joining right, in this way, right. and even of what I'm asking or proposing people do mm. in the end, the, the courage and the actually the effort to keep that up. Ah, in, right. In the way, in on your own part. Or on my own part, yeah. yeah, yeah. To continually say I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of open enough to do this right, and yeah. to test those boundaries of what does it mean, what does it demand, what does it need to put my body into something, mm. to be a part of something. And it's a great perceptual shift. Sh right, sure. I think that one show is a drop in it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, my hope is that people maybe go home and want to draw or like make right. something or yeah, yeah. do it in their own way. Mm. I've definitely had the feeling of afterwards being on the subway in New York and like looking at someone and going, were they there? Right. Huh. And they probably weren't, but just that feeling that uh, that the way that I connected with the people at the show, that, that they could have been anybody there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you also, I mean, this is back a bit to this question of the age we're living in, but the beautiful first song, which is funny as well, about we want you all to ourselves is mm -hmm. what your company sings. Mm -hmm. And that's an increasingly difficult thing to ask as people mm. ha are really dealing um, mm. with their phones and the mm -hmm. present tense. Um, yeah. uh, do you yeah. find perhaps part of the joy people are finding is to be focused on one thing yeah. at a time? Yeah, uh, yeah. I do. Yeah. I do think that, because my intention, my intention wasn't to say like, what's going to be a happy show? Or yeah, no, like right. It, it actually really scared me to make something that people felt joy yeah, in right. the end, because it's like the arty movie doesn't have a happy ending. Yes, you know? right, sure. Um, yeah. But it, I think that, that when you feel connected and, then you, f and you are uh, not distracted and not doing multiple yep. things at once, right. there is a greater increased possibility that you will feel uh, joy. Right. Huh. Yeah, I do think it's harder to feel that and right. be doing multiple yeah. things at once. And um, right. it's kind of it, that thing of like it's, it is perhaps also there all the time, mm. if you want Right, it. right, sure. Uh, a kind of Zen Yeah, a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Some, yeah, uh, no, it's, uh, some Buddhist teacher said, like, um, life is just on its knees begging you to marry it huh, all huh, the time, huh. you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's there ready to, like, right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you were quoted once as saying, um, you make dances mistaken as plays. Mm, um, mm -hmm. Can you explain what you meant by that? Yeah, I mean, I think that it, there is a little bit of this, I have this feeling of a sort of irreverently grabbing from whatever is uh, around in my dances. So that being singing, talking, uh, moving your face, right. um, yeah. working from people's life stories, working from things that are actually recognizable in the culture, right. so identifiable. Um, and there's been people coming up to me literally after show saying, I loved your play, hmm. and relating to it in that way. Right. And that yeah. I, I am excited by uh, expanding what is possible. Right, and, yeah. Uh, yeah dance performance but I don't know the labels get tiring well I was too, wondering right? about that Isn't question like of labels because yeah. you know 
it, we seem to be, a lot of people are, you know, curatorially, you know, seeing this moment as a return to a certain kind of interdisciplinarity and yeah. dr younger right. artists drawing from so many things, not really being yeah. comfortable with the labels anymore. I mean, do you find yeah, that? Yeah, it's, yeah, I think it's, I mean, it's almost this like human amnesia, right? It's like uh -huh. we think it's new suddenly. Yes, you know? right, yeah, <laughs> it's like I know, We right. think there's some newness like that, that we could be able to do, like Mixing to media dance and, and sing movement and, <laughs> and, movement and, and <laughs> do it in any space. And, right, yeah. Um, so in a way, there feels like hubris in saying that there's some, something new about it, but um, I think it can feel, like I say, like certain tropes develop even around what experimentation can be. And, right, sure, um, right, right. With that it can't be like, it has to be quite boring or quite serious and that it can't be funny. It has if to you're be laughing inaccessible. or delighted, okay. right. then it's probably not pushing an edge. And, right, right. And I think that's something that I um, just think is isn't is bullshit right yeah so, yeah right yeah. <laughs> right I sort of do too but yeah um, do you do you f um, you know in the in the museum world which we're very much part of as well as the performing art side of what we do mm -hmm. at the Walker um, yeah. there's this relatively new embrace by museums of performance and dance yeah. uh, how do you yeah. feel about it and uh, do you think it's a positive thing uh, I, I mean I do I think it's a positive thing I think it's um I think it's still like to be to yes. be determined. Right. Uh, I I think that when we're making a new architecture in which the the floors are also sprung and <laughs> <laughs> in which duration really is crossing both ways, like right. three performers are are having three month runs and right, but right. it seems to have to fit into the model of the of the gallery space where it, it uh, runs in a durational where the the audience isn't demanded to sit and watch. It kind uh -huh. of meets the yes. that um, visual art uh, context of viewership. Yeah. And right. So I'm really curious. I'm, I think it's it could be really incredible. I right. think that um, economically it can be useful. really useful. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was at a time like if you think about Trisha Brown and Robert Rauschenberg and yeah. Jasper, like all these Jasper Johns and like sure. all that collaboration was really. Uh, well, the collaboration was really rich, but also the visual artists were often supporting quite Definitely. directly financially right. yeah. the, the choreographers. Right, so right. I'm, I'm, you know, a little dubious that it won't just be a trend that yes. will kind of slip right. away and yeah. hopeful that it would lead to some, hmm. along with this sense of uh, things becoming more hybrid. And you've had, uh, you've had your work at the New Museum as part of Younger Than Jesus and also yeah. at the Museum of Design. Museum of Art and Design. Art and Design. I was in the Makers yeah, there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, yeah, so I've been in, in some museum shows. Right, but, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I hope for like a, a kind of deeper transformational right. yeah. mutuality. Uh, there's, 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 you know, there's the edges of hierarchy, I think, in, in yes. that, in those. In those worlds. Yeah, and yeah. then maybe you feel it as a curator, too, inside a museum. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. The, the, yeah. You know, there's just very different histories and trajectories yeah. of, these, of these forms. And uh, as much yeah. as we think they're all blurred together, we sometimes realize, oh, we're looking at things through very different lenses or in a different right. kinds of. But I think a yeah. lot of artists are interested in somebody else's platform and I, th mm -hmm. I we're mm. seeing visual artists mm. or say uh, who make videos for galleries wanting to have a theatrical presentation so that focus yeah. would be there or right you know um, just you know trying the other person the other disciplines yeah. frame in a certain way but uh, right uh, yeah so that they're again like more 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 possibility yeah among it's not like uh, uh, we're just gonna come into your context and right hopefully right. benefit from some yes of the, right um, resources or something. yeah or that we're gonna kind of steal from you and say right. we did it or yes. whatever yeah yeah uh, right. but that there is yeah a kind of it is increasing a, a possibility quite, for both yeah for all it's parties. a very interesting moment because it's nothing settled it feels like but at the same token yeah. a lot of people are experimenting with things and yeah uh, yeah and I think yeah both artists and yeah institutions yeah. can kind of help lead that yeah conversation did yeah. you think of attendance as a site-specific work I did yeah, yeah. and I thought of it I, mean, I think of it that way and yeah. I think of it I think of it as a, a, a site we we bring with us uh -huh. but that also must be made in the, each space right so the 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 work the set the seating yeah. right it's all contained the sound which is, you know, 
it's it's in some sense contained and in another sense completely collaborating with wherever it goes. Yeah, yeah. And that it is it is literally the people who are there that night uh -huh. that make it. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also the venue that we're in and yeah, I've noticed oh I need a little more load in time than I thought sometimes uh -huh. because um if it's a black space versus a yeah, right, these things sure. greatly impact it. And I've noticed too the seen it in three separate spaces now. Yeah. Each time it had its own unique character. You really seem yeah. to either consciously or unconsciously make a point to kind of make yeah. remake it for the Definitely. space it's in. Yeah, yeah, that's very conscious. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it is a it is about activating where we are. Right. Uh, and is it s sort of do you not want it to just become a touring show that like, you know, can go in anywhere and do its thing. I mean, thing. I, I want I want that, and <laughs> yeah. I want to s to have the time to do to make it special for each space. Right, right. So I guess yeah. not like in the sense that we could have you know one day of load in or yeah, right, uh, I don't right. need to be there or, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Right, yeah. But I think uh, I like that it has this sort of possibility to go to many different types of spaces. Right. That it could be in a church or a warehouse, and yeah. it could be in a. But you know we do need certain light equipment and sound equipment and then yeah, okay right. floor. So it's yeah. yeah. I think it's a, a maybe not even fully noticed, but it's appreciated by audiences. Mm. It sort of mm. feels like oh, there's mm. been some care and thought about how this is situated. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Even the choices we had yeah. struggled with a little bit. Like, do we close the curtain? Do we open right. it? Right. If you open it, then you sort of yeah. uh, took the extra steps to make that open mm. volume of air and all those empty seats work for the work instead of against it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I never want to feel like we're kind of hanging in somewhere that's that's not right. uh, vibrant or being acknowledged in yeah. some way that yeah. we are where yeah. we are. Can you talk yeah. about the role of humor in your work? Uh, I yeah. mean, it's, uh, it hasn't, contemporary dance yeah. and modern dance before it didn't right. really wasn't known for its great sense of humor so much. Uh, right, right. But your humor yeah. is often, uh, it's it's often juxtaposed against uh, a dislocation or disturbing qualities. Yeah, it. there's frequently a sense of it being a part of uh, a disorientation or a dislocation or um, a recognition also, like a kind of seeing something that you might see yourself in in some way, uh -huh. but then a little bit askew, uh, or I guess I, the word slippage. Right. Like I'm here and I can identify that I'm here. Uh, oops, actually I'm over here. And mm. uh, sort of laughing and identifying with one uh, place. Right. And then having that place shift, I find is a exciting tool for a kind of opening, a questioning, mm. um, a sense of, oh, uh, if I can question that kind of the context I've projected onto what's going on, yeah, yeah. then maybe I can kind of question my position. Huh. Um, so that's in there. And then I think it's also just some sensibility uh, around the edges between like a, the experience. The, the, from the very first solo I made in college, I thought it was going to be like a really dark breakup solo. Right. About, I was yeah. going through a breakup. I was yeah. really sad. And people laughed at it. And oh. uh, <laughs> were you hurt? I wasn't. I actually thought, okay, if you go far enough into that, there's something uh, absurd, absurd, kind of? or, okay. or um, self-reflective. Mm. Um, so I think that, yeah, I'm curiosity about how inside one thing there are many possibilities for reads right. and for yeah. sensations. Yeah. And yeah, I think humor is a useful way of also opening to yeah. be, to kind of get in. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I never am trying to get people to laugh. Right, right. It's just something about, in rehearsal, the things that uh, kind of make that, <laughs> like that do that to the yes, body, that right. are kind of catch, catching on to something for mm. me. Because I know that, I mean, you also explore these, a, a range of kind of, um, uncontrollable physical human responses like you have the performers yeah. do these things yeah. and but laughter is kind of like is another one and right. it's interesting to watch the work and watching people laugh at the same time they're kind of going through their own spasms of yes. physical uncontrollability. It's true. I think laughter is a kind of you know if if we're, it's a kind of leakage yes, in a way, like right. to, to sort of a societal um, container. Or, yeah, yeah yes, so it, right. can, it can serve many functions. It can be 
I'm uncomfortable. Right. It can be I'm here in the room and I want people to know that I'm here right. <laughs> by laughing. It can be a, a, a spontaneous release. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that often that my shows that the laughter has m m different edges. Yeah. In right. it. Yeah. Or uh, yeah, or just seeing something that is kind of unexpected and a body doing something that's deeply awkward. Right. Um, yes. Right. And yeah. Uncertain and uncertainty around how it's meant to be right read. Yeah uh, I, I find it also in watching the I mean it tends to be a kind of laughter that often bubbles up Individually th different things hit different people. It's not like everyone yeah, collectively laughs true. and then it goes right. away or something, but um, Yeah, I was wondering you know yeah. you've done a lot of amazing collaborations We got to know each other with your work through young Jean yeah. Lee but yeah. also Taylor Mack and Cynthia yeah. Hopkins and NTUSA. And yeah. What are those kind of downtown theater and you know other disciplinary artists? How did they affect your work when you collaborated mm. with those folks? Yeah, right. So I met Young Jean right when I, I really I was doing a artist in residency at Brooklyn Arts Exchange. Uh -huh, right. And so was she. And I, it was really when I first started making my work very intensely. Hmm. And so right as I did that, I also, she asked me to collaborate on a show called Church. Oh, yeah. So from, I guess, We were a commissioner way, and uh, came yeah. here. And, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, so I, I mean, that, that dance to the, yeah. the, um, right. the Jesus Rock song. Yes, right. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, that was the first one you did with the That was the first one I did. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it, and it was sort of at this time where I was kind of uh, forming my like really experimenting with what my process was, with, with how I made things, yeah, and, yeah. and uh, carving out kind of my practices, and uh, but also so working with Young Jean, then working with NTUSA, working with Cynthia Hopkins, working with Taylor Mack. Yeah. So from that project led to many others. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I was also always being asked to make things in different contexts uh -huh. with very specific directives. Right. And it, what it would constantly do was push what I thought was possible in terms of my work. It took mm. me out of a precious space uh -huh. of saying Phaedra Skull's work is, right. you know, even right. though I was making my own work and very actively trying to find my voice sure. inside of that, yeah. I was also always being expanded mm. in these other ways through making things that are inside a larger context. Right. Or right. I need a, um, you know, Cynthia needed a, her dad, uh, Going, uh, uh, she did this dance. Um, her father's that was the piece at Soho Rep. At Soho yeah, Rep, right, yeah. And yeah. so it was a sort of study of a body and, and Parkinson's, right? And, yeah. Um, something that I might not have thought to 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 study, and right, uh, yeah. or in the shipment with Young Jean yeah. to like, okay, let's like talk with these African American actors and let's like look at um, old minstrel shows right. and let's think how can we do that so that it empowers them and is yeah. also like messing with the form right. and so those little challenges almost like comp assignments uh, for me yeah sure that I probably wouldn't have given myself oh. but that each one opened up a different way of working and probably fed back into work my oh, work in ways huh. I didn't right no and then also think watching each of them direct and each of them hmm. How they made things. I think that there's a something in my spirit that connected to the yeah. that type of um, performativity. Yeah, and yeah. And to your work all the way up to uh, Untitled Feminist Show, which we helped yeah. premiere and commission yeah, things, yeah, yeah. and it was seemed yeah. really like an uh, like an equal collaboration practically. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like, because it was uh, no text at all, and yeah. so much of uh, yeah. movement that. Um, you yeah. know that you you contributed to the whole absolutely piece. Yeah. yeah and also just ways of thinking about uh how to make how to create movement how yeah to generate, uh, right um, right yeah, yeah. well i i think that there's just i was going to have a last couple of questions but one is um how i find that your work seems to have a lot of paradoxes attached mm. to it in some mm. ways like the mm. intensely rigorous you know, deeply scored, heavily rehearsed mm -hmm. nature of what those performers have to do, while at the same time the feel that it's a kind of improvised, chaotic, yeah. you know, up for grabs party or something. Right. And how you yeah. find the balance of yeah. those two? It's I'm sure it just takes a tremendous amount of time to to make it feel that way. Yeah, 
Yeah, it definitely does. It's a lot of, um, and in continual time, like even when the show's made. Oh yeah, I do give notes it, after every yeah, show. Yeah, every show we do notes before, uh -huh. and we do certain practices to kind of get into a, a state. Right, oh really. To be able to meet the, oh. those demands. Right, uh, right. Because the, the more something's performed, the more it kind of wants to feel Settle lived in, in yes. or settled in. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so it's a constant challenge. It's a constant kind of working to meet the form really rigorously and like clearly and right. like the musicality because there's actually a lot of it is musical yes, for me. Yes, right, yeah. So it's, it's scored in that sense of notes and tones being hit. Yeah, uh, right, huh. If you think of notes and tones as physical presences right. and being somewhere at a certain place with your foot right. and literally making a sound Sometimes with your actually voice. Sometimes actually hitting the tone. You <laughs> actually hitting it, yeah. the tone right. and a boom, 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 boom on the platform. And, right, yeah. Um, but then also kind of destroying it right. enough so that yeah. there's a fissure and a break for something live and in right. real time. Yeah. And um, hmm. So I, I, it's funny, when I talked to Justin, he used the word operatic, and uh. I, I sometimes use that as well, not because it's... Oh. Opera, obviously, right, yeah. but because of we're using sort of, uh, I know opera singers use voices in their uh, parts of their body that we can't we can't sure. control. Right, there's right. like the automatic for us. Yeah, and they're like yeah. if you could control your digestion or something, uh, which you right. Can. So yeah. it's kind of mastering these aspects of our um, body and psyche. Right, that, yeah. Uh, huh. I think. Do you, so you have to your performers have to be in a certain zone w before they go into the performance. You work with them for yeah. a couple hours leading up to well, each performance. Yeah, we, we mm, it's almost more like a kind of constant, uh, a little this way, a little this, like oh, once okay. we've generated the project right, and like yeah. the, all those layers are living in their right. body, yeah. uh, it's more about, oh, it's gotten too tight. Oh, it's yeah. gotten too loose. Oh, right. it's gotten too in this direction. Oh, it needs to be more unknown. Yeah. And so it's not so much about like we have to psych ourselves up every night. Yes, yeah, yeah, state. right, right. It's more about what do we need tonight uh -huh. to kind of tune oh, the okay. instrument right. towards that. Right. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is that your your use of uh, like the facial facial gestures and some of the and movement and things. Some of it is so uh, style hi, hi, heightened mm -hmm. and stylized mm -hmm. um, that it almost one could on a surface read it as kind of its own like separate. Um, mm. Art you know, style uh, that yeah. is apart from real life, but then you're actually touching on all these human. Mm. You're you're investigating all these human emotions. That balance between the sort of yes. surface facial over gesture and the right. actual emotional core, or like points yeah. that you're hitting. Yeah. I wonder about that. I mean, how do you? Uh, how did you come uh, come yeah, to that? Yeah, I mean, I think um, I think I've been really fascinated by the play with image uh -huh. and play with ourselves. Um, the way ourselves are kind of co uh, collaborating with images of ourselves uh -huh. all the time uh, and right. with our, our families and with our lives and with the literally the, the images that we're constantly interacting uh, with. Yeah, I was wondering, because you've so said we, we're, we perform our lives, right? Uh, I mean, have you yeah, said something I mean, like I think, that? Yeah, I think if you think of, yeah, if you think of, I think of performance as a uh, improvisation within a scene of constraint or, a, which is something that Judith yeah. Butler has said yes. around performance uh -huh. of gender. Yeah, right, um, sure. But also as a kind of um, a c collectivity, a way that we're, we're making it up as we go yeah. together. And a play with the ideas of ourselves, self the way we narrate our lives, mm. uh, the way we want to be consistent, uh, the way I don't want to smell bad. <laughs> right, right. The way I might be a little bit different around you than I am around my mom. Right, So yeah, I guess performance yeah. in the sense of a right. kind of state of commitment to yes. trying to uh, make up something yeah. with you. And not yeah. necessarily as a negative or a falsity, but just as a kind of uh, state that we maybe are in right. together. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah, and so, like in the stop action section, yes. um, I've been really interested in the representation of the thing. So this image of saying hello, this right, like, sure. uh, archetype or idea of, right. of a greeting. Yeah. Uh, the labor it's taking them, the sweat to say hello, ah. uh, the the falsity and the attempt to have a genuine experience with the, the hello. So right. sort of letting all those yeah. layers be inside one 
um, sequence. Sequence. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh. that it's it's both and. Uh. I guess it's the it's the way that I'm both uh, m me and I'm probably have my dad's facial expression and I uh. probably am trying to maybe upkeep something right. yeah. sometimes and right. make sure you get what I mean. Mm. Nod my head and smile, right. but you know, um, and that kind of sweet and, and, and challenging and uh, exhausting mm. um, and the way things are both, you know, are, are kind of a way it's creating a, a, fr a friction and an energy yeah. of, of life. Mm. <laughs> huh. so, and I guess to make some of that visible. Right. And I think that section also is, a, is definitely a, a, a little bit of a critique of the uh, hyper uh, Susan Foster calls it the crisis of authenticity, a mm. sort of hyper-performativity of right. the culture that we're in. It's like, I might put something on Instagram and... Right. Uh, and I, I am each time seeing someone like it, re-experiencing it maybe through their eyes, right. a photo that I may or may not have really been there for, but huh. I'm having an experience of them experiencing it right. <laughs> through right. their bodies and their gaze and... Huh. So not to say that's just negative, but just to kind of uh, play with that yeah. through the live body again, like right. almost reinsert that refraction mm -hmm. into the lived time. Right. And right. it's also for me the ritual drum again, uh -huh. uh, the visceral sense of uh, keeping the drum? well. Uh, yeah. Well, the I was in thinking about ritual for the work I was. Uh, thinking how much drums are part of sure. many rituals and right. sense of rhythm and sense yeah. of something that takes you and transport you. Yeah. So yeah. F the platform at the beginning is the first one. The first drum. The yeah. And that was what it's mic'd underneath as a kind of yeah. drum surface. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right. And then the stop action section was a way that I wanted rhythm to be transmitted. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, kind of consistent right, trance-like sure. state. Right, right. Without banging kind of. a drum. Yeah, right. But that if I watch you do that long yeah, enough, I yeah. actually start to feel a kind of yeah. heartbeat and pounding. Right. Huh. Um, so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of layers going on yeah. for me in that. Right. And it's an amazing, yeah. it's a great section. Uh, I mean the whole, yeah. and the transitions you use are so, they must have been worked on very hard. We had a reviewer mm. locally who mm. wrote on our website and really yeah. commented on how yeah you made a work that you didn't even, no one even notices the transitions and you just mm. think a section is durational mm. and then before you know it, it's moved on to a whole other world and you surprise yourself that mm. I didn't notice this transition happen in some mm. ways. Um, mm. Did that, yeah. did that, I'm sure it took a lot of care on your part. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think that kind of getting comfortable thinking you're somewhere and then not yeah. quite knowing when it changed, yeah. but noticing that it changed is yeah. something that I was, that I'm often working with. Right, yeah. right. I noticed too, I mean, I know everybody comes up to you and has their own interpretation of the work, and mm -hmm. I'm sure mine is mm -hmm. just mine, um, but I loved how the, your start was everyone interconnected physically, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, on the platform, not the very start, but, yeah. and there's a sense of almost an amoeba, like a single cell or something mm -hmm. starting mm -hmm. to divide, and, and then, they start to separate out, and Sean is the first who swings his arm out, and yeah. you get the sense of in, uh, the start of individuality, mm, and kind mm. of the sense of pros and cons of mm. suddenly them all becoming this, mm -hmm. their own distinctive individuals in the world. Yeah, but yeah. you bring it all back together with a community being formed with the audience. At yeah, the end. Was yeah, that yeah, a, yeah. Was that an intentional like uh, or? There was like there is one. Yes, that is part of an arc that was in it, yeah, a, yeah. A, um, very light looking at actual biology was something that I was interested oh, really? in. The way, yeah. yeah, the yeah. like, and the relationship between that and desire or the yeah. idea of like a single cell organism. Um, right. Then growing and splitting and dividing and uh -huh. then things kind of becoming more and more complex and, mm. um, yeah. But the, yeah. once they became their own people, mm -hmm. of course, violence and anger and dysfunction as well as joy and love and things all you kind of had to yeah. do it all, and uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's the the stop action section. Yes, yeah, so right. Like kind yeah. of holding a little, yeah, like um, constant morphing between uh, many human. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. 
Faye, I so appreciate you taking this time, and yeah. we're looking forward to part two so much. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm excited um, to be working with you on that. Yeah, yeah, we wish you the best on these on the next stages of development, and uh, Thank you. we're glad we have three more performances of attendance. Yeah, so, yeah. Thanks, Faye. Anyway, thanks, Faye. Yeah.